What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? Just this is J J J J P N N I H O S in the house in, in, in the house. Not joking. Anyway, so I went. Okay, these pictures that you've seen are pictures of people growing their own food in their own gardens, and these are everywhere in Japan, especially out in the countryside, you know. And I made this because it's part two of homeless and uh. <laughs> Um, they can lots and you could do this a lot of you who own your own homes you know just make a little patch and grow your food you'd be surprised how fast things grow how fresh it is I mean I remember when I was living in Venice I used to live in uh, 525 Bro uh, Broadway Avenue and I think next door which would have been 527 there was a man named Mr. Woods and, and then it was Mr. Lee's at 525 and they were great people and I used to clean for Mr. Lee's house and then Mr. Wood would he asked me to help him and I don't know I, I, I uh, my brother told me I just it was a lot of stuff I forgot so I wouldn't help Mr. Wood clean up his backyard it was a total mess his garage was just really messed up so I cleaned it up and he made a little patio in the back we made a patio well, he showed me what to do, and I did it. Um, you know, patio with cement, porch cement, mixed it up, everything, trimmed the trees, um, made a little garden in the back, and it was um, grew some fruits and vegetables. And when it grew, we ate it. You know, and it was it was really good. And, well, you guys can't see much, and it was it was really 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 good. And I used to always think to myself, wow, that was so cool. Because I remember when I was living in Inglewood, my mom, she did the same thing. When we um, were living out there in the back, you know, we just grew our own lettuce and different things. And it grew really fast. And what was so interesting about it was it was more than enough for the whole family to eat. I mean, you know, it was a lot. You know, we had um, water, not watermelon, maybe pumpkin, maybe watermelon and some other stuff. I forgot. But... It was more than enough and if people were to um, if you were to do that in your neighborhoods you know the problem of us eating would just disappear you know that would just disappear and you know like I said we wouldn't go hungry our kids wouldn't go to school hungry or and stuff like that you know you wouldn't have mothers worrying about this and food stamps you know you can tell the government to keep their food stamps you know and because a lot of stuff that we eat anyway is just killing us i mean look at the obesity in the united states anyway you know if you eat grew your own vegetables and you ate them you're not going to get fat you're not going to get obese by eating vegetables and that's a fact but still uh that's something that uh, we can do and like i said you can sell this stuff but what's really interesting though is you know, every time I think about that, I always think about slavery. And I've always thought about that. You know, the one thing about slavery that we should have learned was that when we work together, we can build a nation. And that's exactly what we did, even though we were forced to work together. But that's exactly what happened. And I'm not saying that before um, Columbus and them came that we weren't there already in America and in different parts of the world. And we didn't have our own stuff. But it was just... Um, and the reason I'm even saying this is because there's probably a lot of people who don't even know. Well, I'm not saying a lot of people, but there are quite a few people who don't know about the history of black people in America before um, Columbus came, you know, because there were thriving cities and things like that. It wasn't, you know, people living in teepees and they throwing sticks and stuff at, at each other and stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing like that. But, um... But I'm just saying, you know, just using that because a lot of people only have that as a reference, you know. But, you know, we work together and, of course, it was forced. But, you know, the things that um, were produced, I mean, you know, and, and a lot of that stuff was produced off the land, you know, the cotton and tobacco and all of that stuff. Look, here, this is somebody's house, somebody's private property, you know. It's people's private property right there. And they just growing this stuff right there. I mean, look, they go police station right there, you know, and they just growing it and they take it to the local markets and different places and set up and just sell it. And here go another one right here. I mean, they're all over the place. And it's beautiful to see it because you don't see it in the cities so much. You know, uh, most people, some people, they have it up on their balconies and stuff. But out in the countryside, you see this a lot. 
you know, or it's not. Yeah, over there where that blue thing is, that's covering some, uh, probably some vegetables too. You know, look, you go to the corner, bam, they're growing rice over there. You know, if you can see it. You know, so it's um, it's something that they're doing. Look down there too. You know, I mean, people are growing their own food, and when you grow your own food. You know, there's really, there isn't going to be any reason for you to have to go starve. And then the money that you would you normally, I mean, it's funny. You go, you spend, let's say you buy $20 worth of seeds, right? And that $20 worth of seeds will feed your family for how many months? You know, and we wasted it. You know, he got some more, you know, right on, um, on the uh, river things, you know. Over here too. Look at that man watching. You see this man out there. Look at that. He's out here by himself. See that guy right there? Right there? By himself. And he's doing all of this. You know? Over here, too. You know? So, just imagine $20 worth of seeds. Look. I mean, it's everywhere here. Especially in the, um, look how clean it is. And, and it's real easy to do. You know, it's really easy to do. And a lot of people, you know, they're doing it and... They sell their food, and you know, in different places and stuff, and the money that they get from that. Because a lot of these people, you know, they can't just go and get these nice jobs and stuff where they sit behind a desk and make a million dollars. So they just grow food and sell it to those who make a million dollars, and they make enough money to send their kids to colleges and things like that. And but I hear that. Um, see, they got some more over here. But look at all that cabbage, or is it lettuce? It's one of them, cabbage or lettuce. Look at all of that. There's no way that one family going to eat all of that, you know? And that's what, from one, two seeds, two packages of seeds and stuff like that. And once you start growing your own vegetables and replant them again, you won't even have to buy seeds. And just imagine all the money you'll save. You know, just imagine all that money that you'll save because we spend way too much money on food, you know? I mean, that money that's going on food can go towards different things. And once you start over here too, once you start... Um, saving your money and doing different things with it then you can start having hobbies and things because one thing is is a lot of us work to eat or we eat to work we work to eat and that's what a lot of us do but it shouldn't be like that you know you shouldn't i mean how long do you think it's going to take him to um you know to get out there clean the land up and put the plants in and just water it when it comes pick it up you don't have to go out there every day and doing you know spending eight nine hours ten hours a day growing um, vegetables it's real easy I even uh, remember um, reading somewhere in one of these books, I don't know, Dr. Francis, uh, what's his name? I can't think of these guys' name. I forget. I used to read a lot. They, um, but anyway, I read one of those books where it said that uh, in Egypt, they will work three months out of the year for the harvest because that was the time of harvest and stuff. And then the rest of the nine months, they play. You know, and what I mean by play is not like you know just playing basketball or whatever they're doing, but the play means is studying. You know, because studying it is fun. I mean, you do it, you study, you know, together, and you can. I mean, it's a lot of fun studying. You know, especially when you can study with different people. Like I study with my son sometimes, and you know he gets kind of angry and stuff. You know, but I keep trying, trying to show him how fun studying is. You know, and. It's um, it's it's a fun thing and it's good to do, but you would spend a lot of your time, you would uh, use a lot of your time to do other things other than just um, you know, working and stuff. So you guys really think about it, cause I tell you what, I don't know who watched my videos or what, but any of you guys out here watching my videos, if y'all living in these um, poor neighborhoods and stuff, what you need to do is you need to go talk to your gangbangers, okay. You need to go talk to the older people. You need to go talk to influential people that are in your neighborhoods. Show them these videos, these videos. You guys watch it and you start growing your own food. Because once you start growing your own food, it really is going to start opening up your eyes towards other businesses, especially when you start selling it and things like that. And you say, well, you know, I don't want to sell it. Well, you know, hey, people buying drugs for $25, you know, you sell your white thing of cabbage for $25. At least if. I think cabbage or lettuce or whatever, it's not, it's going to last more than a day anyway. No one's going to eat the whole thing in one day. And that's what, that's the beauty about vegetables, you know. 
of it, you're not going to eat it all in one day because it's going to fill you right up, you know. So um, that's really important. So please, please um, do that. Now, as far as I'm in my house, I can't do it, but I'm going to talk to my wife and see if we could um, start growing some vegetables and stuff, you know. But, um, but still, you know, you don't, if you got those bacon lots and everything, then you go and you um, grow the food and because a lot of these young kids out here they're not doing anything and trust me they just um, like especially if they're dropping on high school which I'll tell you something about dropping out of high school in Japan you the compulsory schools is from the kindergarten to um, ninth grade they have a test to get into high school if you don't pass the test you are not going to high school there are a lot of kids out here who do who mess around in school and don't go to high school. And what they end up doing is getting these jobs, you know, working in these hotel, um, not hotels, but these clubs, or they're working at family restaurants like, um, like I guess they would call them Denny's, or they're working in convenience stores and things like that. And they're doing this at 16 years old, so they have to make their lives and everything. So, to say that in the United States, to saying that, oh, well, you know, kids dropping out of high school and stuff like that, and they're going to be no one. It's not even that, you know, it's just that compulsory school in the United States is just um, to the 12th grade. But once they get in the 10th grade, you know, a lot of these kids don't really learn nothing and things like that. But um, in Japan, it's the same thing. You pass a test, you go to high school. If you don't pass a test, you don't go to high school and trust me there are a lot of kids a lot of kids out here in Japan who are not in high school once they hit 16 they don't pass that test they're grown-ups and they got to get out there and get a job and, it's, and the chance of them even going to college is really rare unless they meet some foreign guy and um, they go to the states and then they're because here you know they'll know you you can almost tell by talking to people and stuff you know who's what but um and um, uh, you know, but they they go to America and their status is instantly raised because they um Asian and they mess around and go to school because they you know they 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 learn a lesson they go back to school and you know become something and make a lot of money and that's good you know so anyway but with the food thing cause I, uh, I just wanted to say you know a lot of guys are not in school you know they just hanging out doing nothing hanging around doing nothing in those neighborhoods, you know. But you guys can build your neighborhoods and start with the food, you know. Start with growing vegetables and things like that because if you grow that ve those vegetables and stuff like that, you can get into international marketing and stuff and try to um, see how much it costs to uh, ship different things. Because, like, out here now, because of the free trade thing and stuff, um, first they have, like, the Japanese um, growers. They had their bananas and stuff. A bunch would be, like, $3 or $2 or something like that, you know. And now you're getting Spanish bananas coming in and Filipino bananas coming in, and they're like a dollar for a bunch, you know. And some people buy them, you know, the people, if they're smart, they will buy their own products from the Japanese um, workers because it's keeping the money in the country and stuff, you know. But still, you know, it's they're doing it with all kinds of stuff. I think they have like Australian kiwis are coming over here, you know, and they're cheap. You know stuff like that so the market is there and just do that because once the kids start um, those young men are out there because you gotta look at it like this right you got a neighborhood of high school students how many high school students are there that are dropping out you know per neighborhood right and then if you have them working you know and it's not even a lot of work and it's not even a lot to do and I'm running out of time but if you have them doing that you know it would keep their minds um, and keep them busy and they would really develop a whole different sense of life and stuff and then start uh, like I said in my other videos you know you have these retired teachers come back and start teaching them because they're not dumb you know it's just that the government just makes us think that our kids are dumb but they're not you know and, uh, from my videos and for what I've you know give videos guys saying hey you know I was watching your videos when I was in junior high school now I'm in college you know and thanks if it wasn't for that you know if I could do it and I'm you know just a thousand miles away you guys are there you can do it too anyway I'm out peace